So we're on video six, number 32, and we're gonna simplify the expression. So hopefully we remember how to simplify uh, square root values, radical values. Remember, we treat them like if they were variables. So like right here you have seven, square root of seven, take away three, square root of seven. The answer is simply four, square root of seven. Why? Because it's kind of like saying you have seven of something, seven apples, for example, take away three apples, you're going to have four apples left over, and that's your final answer. Kool-Aid. Let's move on. Number 33. It says write the equation in standard form. As you can see, that's a point-slope form equation. Um, standard form is when we talk about a linear equation, it's ax squared, I mean ax plus by equals c. Now, standard form quadratic equation that we've done before, that's ax squared plus bx uh, plus c equals zero. That's a standard form quadratic. But for a linear, there is no exponent here. It's ax plus by equals c. So obviously, it, this standard form equation does not have parentheses that we see here. So let's first start by getting rid of those parentheses. I'm going to distribute uh, 4. So we have 4 times x, that's 4x. 4 times 7, that's 28. I want to bring down the equal sign, bring down the y and the minus 8. Uh, so standard form has the letters on the left side and the numbers on the right. So I want to subtract 4x and subtract 4x. So right here, the 4x is canceled. And I might as well do two steps in one. I want to get that minus 8 and move it over to the other side. So I want to go plus 8 so it'll cancel and plus 8 over here. So our new uh, equation, what's left on the left side, you want the x term first, right? ax plus by, you want the x term first, so that's going to be a negative 4x plus y. Negative 4x plus y equals 28 plus 8 is 36. Now, you could look for that answer on your multiple choice, but I'm thinking that the Test generator is going to rewrite this whole equation with the a value being positive. So they might multiply everything by negative 1, okay? And if you do multiply everything by negative 1, you're going to get positive 4x. You're going to get negative y equals negative 36. That's just something you need to look out for because sometimes they do leave it like this, negative 4x plus y equals 36. But if you don't see that exactly, they might have multiplied everything by negative 1, and you have this new standard form equation that has the a value of positive 4 instead of negative 4. So just make sure you be careful with that on your multiple choice answers. Okay, moving on. Um, 34. Write an exponential form. That sounds confusing, but the fact is that a square root can be rewritten as what power? Does anybody remember? Maybe I should write it right here on the side. A square root can be rewritten as the power of one half. Okay? Now, if there was a third root right here, a three, then that would be a power of one third. Fourth root, power of one fourth. Fifth root, power of one fifth. So it's that simple. I mean, it's like giving you free points on the test. If you have 68p right here, and they want you to rewrite it, but with exponents instead of the radical, that would simply be 68p on the inside to the power of one half. And that's it. You see, it's easy. Okay, um, now number 35, it says write 52 to the one half power in radical form. So if you know that the one half power is simply the square root, we're going to write this in radical form as the square root of 52. Now, whenever you do rewrite it in radical form, you're supposed to try and continue uh, breaking it down. So with the calculator, you guys could use calculators on the test. I would try to do 52 divided by a, a perfect square number. Maybe 52 divided by 4. That gives you 13. So I know for sure that I could rewrite this as the square root of 13 uh, times 4, because 13 times 4 is 52. And you know what? It's, it's better to write it with the 4 first. Let me rewrite it. Square root of 4 times the square root of 13. That way, when you split them, I need more space. Let me write it over here. When you split them, you're going to have the square root of 4 and the square root of 13. So your final answer will be 2 
square root of 13. Okay, so that's your radical form, but on your multiple choice answers, it will be simplified. So yeah, it's easy to say, oh, 52 to the 1 half power, that's really the square root of 52. But they do simplify this by rewriting it with multiplication so you could get a perfect square number and then splitting it and then doing the perfect square number, the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 13 comes down. You can't break that down any further. You're done with number 35. Moving on to 36. Um, that one says 16 to a certain power equals 256. Now, the idea here is to get these guys, the 256 and the 16, get these guys to be the same number, okay? So if you were to think of maybe 16 to the second power, that actually gives you 256. So technically, I could rewrite 256 as 16 to the second power, okay? Um, so let's say I did write it, and I wrote 256 as 16 to the second power. By the way, I did not know that in my head. I have a calculator right here. I just tried to see, since this one's already 16, I tried to see if 16 to a certain power gives me a 256. So I simply tried 16 to the second power, and it really did give me 256. So this one's already um, 16, and it's to the 4x plus 3 power. Of course, there's an equal sign between them. So whenever you do have uh, a certain base to a certain power equals to that same base and a certain power, all you do is scratch out the bases, and the exponents come down, and you have a new equation. So what's our equation here? It's 4x plus 3 equals 2. And of course, all we need to do is solve it now. So let's subtract 3. Subtract 3. You're going to end up with 4x equals negative 1, which means that x equals negative 1 fourth. So that's your answer. x equals negative 1 fourth. Okay? Does everybody understand that? I hope. Okay, now let's say you, you got totally confused. Then maybe you could rewrite. I mean, there's, there's more. There's other ways. There's always many roads to the same place. This is the quickest route. And I hope you guys could do that on the calculator. If you see a 16 here, try to rewrite this with the calculator. Try to do 16 squared. See if it gives you that. It might, it might not be it. I don't know. Maybe you have to rewrite this as 4 squared and see if you could do this. 4 to what power gives you? 256. That could also work. But um, this is the easiest route. Okay, so let me explain 36 even a different way. Once again, guys, the goal is to get the same base number and the same base number with the manipulation of exponents, right? I mean, if you have, if you could make this 16 and this 256 to become the same number but with exponents, then you could cancel out the bases and the exponents come down. So if you're totally confused with the other method, maybe you want to think, how could I rewrite 16? Well, I could write that as 4 squared, or I could write it as uh, 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 times 2. So 2 to the 4th is 16. So maybe, uh, just to see what you guys think, I want to rewrite 16 as 2 to the 4th. Yay? Now we still have the power of 4x plus 3. Okay? Now let's check over here. The whole purpose of changing 16 to become base 2 is to see if we could change 256 to be 2 to a certain power. So with the calculator, you could go uh, 2 to the, let's see, 2 to the 5th, that's 32. 2 to the 7th, that's 128. 2 to the 8th on the calculator, that is 256. So if you wanted to, you could write... 256 as 2 to the eighth power. Yay? Okay, now, now that we have the same base here and here, now that these are both the same, I could do this. Gone. No more bases. However, whenever you do have a power to a power, you have to distribute. So 4 times 4x, that's 16x. 4 times 3, that's plus 12, equals... The 2 disappeared, so now it's just a regular 8. So there's our new equation. You got it? 
So what happens next? Well, let's continue solving. So we're going to have to subtract 12 here and subtract 12 there. So we're going to get 16x equals, what is that? Negative 4? And of course, our final step will be to divide by 16. Divide by 16, and you get x equals uh, negative 1 fourth as your final answer. Do we understand that explanation? Again, the goal was to get the same base. So this one's a 16, I change it to a base 2. This one was 256 with a little bit of struggle and a calculator, I change it to base 2. And then the 2's cancel. Now, this is a lot longer of a process than the original method. Check out the original method. Um, wait, where is that? So my original method, I said, okay, this is 16. Maybe I could change this to be a 16 to a certain power. And I tried it with the calculator. I did 16 squared, and yeah, it gave me 256. So I rewrote 256 as 16 squared. And now that I have a 16 here on this side and a 16 here on this side, I could cancel them both out, and I get the leftover equation 4x plus 3 equals 2. And when you do 4x plus 3 equals 2, you solve it, you get x equals negative 1 fourth anyway. So that's the quickest way of doing it. You guys understand? Cool. Moving on. Uh, number 37 says graph the quadratic function. Ladies and gentlemen, this one is in vertex form. There's your vertex form equation. The value that's out here in the front is your a value. The h value is uh, this number, but you have to think opposite because there's a minus sign on the, on the uh, original vertex form. So whatever you see here, you think opposite. And the k value, you take it for what it is because it's a plus sign. So if that's a minus 3, your k value is a minus 3. So, ladies and gentlemen, what would the vertex be if you understand vertex form? Of course, it's h and k. So what's your h value? Positive 5. And what's your k value? Negative 3. So, guys, just with that, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, in addition to that, does the a value tell you if it opens up or down? Does it open up or down? Opens down, and the A value is negative 1, so you should remember the pattern uh, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, because the A value is 1, right? So, it, I mean, the, the multiple choice graphs are going to be there. It's super easy because you got to look for the vertex 5, negative 3, and if you go to uh, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 3, this is just a, a rough graph here. That's a coordinate, 5, negative 3. You already know it's opening down, and you already know that the A value is negative 1 opening down, and you even have the pattern 1 over 1 down. So if you go 1 over 1 down, you get to that point. If you go 2 over 4 down, you get to that point. 3 over 9 down, right? Well, that's probably not accurate. But anyways, you know that it's a regular U-shaped curve opening down from that uh, vertex. So since it's multiple choice, You'll be able to identify it just by knowing vertex form and being able to see the vertex and seeing that it opens down with the pattern 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9. Awesome, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's move on to uh, 38, another vertex form equation. So uh, how about this? Tell me what the vertex is. What is the vertex? Negative 5. Think opposite there. Yep. Negative 5. Two. Positive 2. That's right. Negative 5, positive 2. Okay. So let's go to... Again, this is already going to be done for you. So let's go to negative 5, negative 5, positive 2, right? So it's a dot right about there. Is this opening up or down? It's opening down, right? Uh, does it have the pattern 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9? No, it does not have the pattern 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9 because the A value is not 1, it's 2. It's actually negative 2. So if you wanted to manipulate your pattern, just in case you can't tell the difference just with the vertex and just opening down, you might want to manipulate the second numbers on your pattern by multiplying by the new A value of 2. So if you multiply these guys by 2, by 2, by 2, you get your new pattern 1, 2 instead of 1, 1. Uh, 1, 8 instead of, two, I mean 2, 8 instead of 2, 4. And uh, 3, 18, but you're not even going to use that last one. Uh, but anyways... From this uh, vertex, if you go 1 over 2 down, you'll get to the next point. You're going to end up with a narrower parabola. That simple, right? 